introduction. <coughs> so first of all, I'd like to thank the uh, organizers uh, to give me uh, such a very nice uh, opportunity to uh, talk here. So my talk is about the uh, electromechanical systems. So the uh, major part of my talk is uh, not a quantum, <laughs> uh, classical regime. Uh, but I think uh, the many phenomena can be uh, well uh, interpreted or understood if we use the word of the quantum mechanics, I mean excitation of the phonon or reaction of the phonon of these kind of things. And the uh, last part, I want to show you some uh, our recent uh, challenge or the uh, new project, uh, try to combine that uh, our uh, electromechanical systems with uh, uh, quantum dot system. Okay, so this is the outline of my talk. So uh, I start from the introductions. First, I want to show that the very basics of the mechanical resonators and the applications. And uh, especially we are using the piezoelectric gallium arsenide and the aluminum gallium arsenide uh, mechanical resonators. So I want to show you that the uh, basic operations. And then there we try to combine these uh, mechanical resonators, two mechanical resonators, and uh, make uh, some kind of the interactions between these two uh, uh, resonances. Especially uh, uh, using the parametric uh, uh, sideband pumping, we can convert the energy from one beam to the other, even when the, you have a different frequencies between these two resonators. And I want to show you some examples, uh, coherent uh, phonon manipulations, and also the thermal noise squeezing. And then the, we extend this idea to for many more, uh, many number of the mechanical resonators combined together, and which forms a one-dimensional phononic crystal. So you can f find that the uh, uh, nice uh, phononic band gap with a uh, band gap was confirmed, and we can use that th these nonlinear properties. You can control the flow of the mechanical or acoustic oscillations by using electric uh, excitations. And uh, I want to show that the parameter control phonon propagations using this uh, one-dimensional phononic crystal. And finally, the, I want to briefly show you that, that we are now trying to combine the, this mechanical resonance with a quantum system. So the uh, gallium arsenide is, of course, a very nice uh, system for making a, a, a quantum dot one dim a zero dimensional system. So we try to combine uh, this mechanical system with uh, quantum dots and see the first that we try to detect this uh, uh, mechanical motion by using this quantum dot transport. And then uh, we uh, also found that there's some nice back action measurement. It means that the uh, motion of the mechanical, a uh, mechanical motion can change the electric states. And this uh, change in the electric states uh, make the uh, back action to this mechanical force. So this means that some kind of the, uh, mutual interactions we can realize using this system. So I want to show you that these four topics. Okay, let me start from the uh, basic of the uh, mechanical resonator. Maybe it's uh, familiar for you. But uh, what we are dealing with is uh, this kind of the doubly cramped mechanical resonators. So that this is a bar. So if you hit the centers, it vibrates at some resonant frequency. So the motion of this uh, mechanical, mo uh, uh, mechanical system can describe uh, this, uh, uh, the equation of motions for the harmonic oscillators. So if you derive that by the sinusoidal force, so you can have uh, this kind of the response. So that uh, a typical mechanical resonator has a very, very high quality factors. Uh, for example, the in vacuums, uh, you have a, a quality factor of 1,000 to the one, 1 million up to. And the frequency ranges from, the, say, uh, some 100 hertz to a few gigahertz recently. So you can realize uh, such a very high frequency and high Q resonators using these mechanical systems. So, and, uh, uh, but uh, this is a purely the classical system, but you can interpret this system as a quantum uh, pictures. It means that it, uh, you, you, you can uh, uh, assume some phonon mode and the virtual phonon bus. So the excitation of this mechanical uh, system correspond to the actuation of the phonons to the, this uh, uh, phonon mode. So of course, that in quantum mechanics, this kind of the, uh, classical motion can be described by the coherent states. But uh, uh, the, the increase, the, uh, this uh, amplitude of the mechanical motion correspond to the increase the number of the phonons uh, confined to this uh, phonon mode. Of course, if you, have a, you think about the damping, which means that the annihilation of the phonon mode, uh, phonons from this uh, uh, phonon mode, and uh, so you can describe this uh, actuation and damping by the phonon dynamics. Okay, people, try, people trying to use uh, this uh, very nice uh, high-quality factor mechanical system for several kinds of applications. 
So one is that, yeah, of course, the mechanical system is a quantum regime. So if you go into the, the gigahertz resonators in the direction fridge, you can get the uh, quantum ground states. And you can study that the quantum mechanical behavior of this uh, macroscopic object. And also the people trying to use this uh, mechanical system for the highly sensitive uh, uh, the, the sensors, for example, the such a kind of the uh, uh, spin, single spin uh, detections or the single atom detection can be done by using this mechanical resonator. So our uh, original target is something slightly different from that. It's more classical, but it's more, uh, in some sense, it's practical. It means that uh, if you think about that the history of the electrical devices, it starts from the linear uh, devices, something like a register or the inductance or the capacitance. So you can form the some kind of resonator filters with that, but the, the function is very limited. But if you introduce that the nonlinearities, for example, two terminal nonlinearity correspond to the electrifying uh, uh, properties, and also the three terminal nonlinearities which correspond to transistors, you can realize many, many new kind of the functions. So the, our idea is to extend to what to uh, do the same uh, directions for the mechanical resonators, maybe you can realize some new kind of the devices using this nonlinear mechanical systems. So that at present, the people are using just the resonators, but if you introduce a two terminal or three terminal functions, you can realize something new devices. So this was our, our original idea. So how you can re realize this kind of the nonlinear uh, the dynamics into the mechanical resonators? So we use uh, the uh, 35 semiconductors, especially the gallium arsenide or aluminum gallium arsenide. So this is a very simple picture of the strain voltage transductions. So the, because the gallium arsenide is the so-called zinc blend structures, so which has a D41 uh, component, which means that if when you apply a voltage in the, for example, this 001 directions, you have an expansion of the material in the perpendicular direction. Of course, if you reverse the, this voltage, you have a compression of the material in the in-plane direction. So this is a very important uh, properties of this uh, 3 5 uh, zinc blend structure, piezoelectric materials. So if you can uh, construct this kind of the, the structures, here you have a, a gold shot gate, a shot gate on top, and here you have a conduct, uh, conductive uh, N-type gallium arsenide, and you have, a, you have a here the insulation layers. This forms some kind of capacitors. But when you apply a voltage between here and here, as I explained to here, you, you have a compression of the material, which induces a bending moment, and you can drive the, this mechanical motion by applying a uh, uh, voltage in the, this uh, uh, in, uh, out of plane direction. So uh, reversely, if you detect the voltage generated between this electrode and this uh, and n type gallium arsenide, you can detect also the vibrations by measuring the voltage. And the third function is that is, uh, if you apply a DC voltage, yeah, which induces uh, this uh, uh, compression of the material, so which induces uh, tensions along uh, this beam. So which means that, uh, for example, something like a musical instrument, something like guitar, if you apply a tension, you can change the tone. So it means that you can tune the resonant frequency by applying a DC voltage. So this is the uh, actuations and detection and the uh, uh, frequency tuning. These three are the most important properties of this uh, uh, gallium arsenide based electronic resonators. Okay, so this is the device structures. So we start, uh, this is a layer structure. It's much more complicated than I ex explained, but in principle that uh, here you have a gold top gate and this is a two-dimensional electron system. So initially we use that for studying some kind of quantum hole uh, effect or something like that using uh, this mechanical system. The, the, the uh, layer structure is a high mobility uh, 2D, 2D system, but the most important function is here you have a, a, a gold top gate, and this is a conductive layer. So if you apply a voltage here and here, you can induce the strain, yeah? Okay, so, the, uh, uh, so we have a, this is a top view. So we have a three gates. One gate is used for the actuations, the other and uh, second gate is used for the detections, and the third gate is used for the frequency tuning. So you can realize, you can realize that these three functions by using this single, single device. So this is a, a mechanical response. When you apply a, a AC voltage to this gate one and sweeping the frequency and detecting that they are the uh, same frequency as this gate two, you can see that this kind of response. So here you have a, a Lorentzian shape correspond to the, uh, the uh, linear regime. And if you increase that the amplitude, you see the, such a kind of discontinuous transition which correspond to the so-called duffing nonlinearity. But I don't go into the detail. But uh, I, uh, the point is that you can clearly uh, confirm that the mechanical motions by using this purely electro-mechanical electro transactions. 
So when you apply a DC voltage to this gas tree, you can see that the frequency can be tuned as, in, as we expect. So you can confirm that uh, this mechanical resonator can be, uh, you, you can realize that the actuations and detections and frequency tuning, please. Yes, what is the nature of this non-linear in your case? Uh -huh. Okay, so this case that uh, you have, a, 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 this is geometrical properties. I mean that this is a beam resonator. So when you apply, a, 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 sorry, the, this non-linearity. Yeah, ah, okay, okay, okay. So, mm -hmm. sound or okay, okay. So, so, so this also comes from the uh, geometrical effect. I mean that when you increase the amplitude, so average length will be increased. So which uh, in apply uh, some kind of the, the average tension to the beam. So which shift the resonant frequency to higher side. Okay. Yeah. Can you actually name something? Well, which kind of strain you, you get into this uh, nonlinear regime? So it depends on the size of the beam, or it actually depends on the strain that is generated inside. <coughs> Okay, so it depends on the, the thickness of the, uh, the beam and also the length of the beam, yeah. So it's a, I think uh, it's a point that if you compare, uh, let me think about that. So if you compare that uh, this uh, uh, the, uh, 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 increase in the length due to the, this uh, uh, the, uh, large amplitude, and if you compare that to the total length, so you, if you cannot let neglect the, this uh, uh, length increase, okay. so you see the, this uh, uh, so the this, this is not a material property. No, 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 no. Geometric. Yeah, geometric. Yeah. But honestly speaking, sometimes you see that such kind of so-called hardening, but sometimes you have see the softening. Uh -huh. So it might be related to some of the additional strain, but uh, some, sometimes we get uh, some different behavior. But in principle, I think that it comes from the ge geometric effect. Okay, so uh, we are then trying to combine the, this uh, uh, mechanical resonant, two mechanical resonators and try to see the, some of the, uh, the operations uh, between these two. Okay, so what we want to do is something like a, a so-called nonlinear uh, quantum uh, photonics or the uh, nonlinear uh, uh, optics. So it means that, it's a, for example, if you apply uh, the pump and the signal light to the nonlinear media, something like lithium niobate, you can generate that the idler, so idler corresponds to generally the sum or the, uh, uh, the difference frequency of this pump and signal. So the, uh, we want to do the some kind of similar kind of experiments using this uh, coupled resonators. So how we can do that? So uh, let me explain using this Hamiltonian system. So because we have a two modes, yeah, two beams, so it corresponds to two modes. So they have a different frequency, right? So that this corresponds to this Bayer Hamiltonian, and this is a, a, a creation and annihilation operator for this each Hamiltonian. And uh, this is a, a driving force, so if it is applied to the only the one beam. Okay, so we need to introduce uh, some coupling between these two uh, modes. So coupling Hamiltonian can be given by this formula. So I, later I show you why we can get this uh, Hamiltonian. But the point is that this is a, a, a uh, product of the two uh, variables times uh, some of the sinusoidal operation. So this sinusoidal uh, the, 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 uh, uh, pumping can be applied from e external uh, electrical signal. Yeah, this is the point. So you can uh, control the, this amplitude and the frequency from uh, using the electrical signal. Okay, so what we can do that? So uh, this Hamiltonian can go into the interaction uh, pictures, so so-called rotating frame approximations. So that you can uh, get uh, this kind of Hamiltonian is uh, complicated, but uh, the, the uh, using if you have a, 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 a pump frequency, which corresponds to the frequency difference between these two modes, and uh, you can uh, omit the two terms, and only that I think you you can uh, have uh, this final term. So this means that the uh, 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 annihilating the phonons in the mode one and creating the phonon in the mode zero. Or the generating the phonon in the mode one and annihilating the phonon in the mode zero. Yeah? So this is corresponds to the so-called so beam splitter Hamiltonian. So it annihilates in the one mode and which uh, move to the other mode. So uh, we can show that using uh, these uh, phonon pictures, so we can, you have uh, two uh, modes one corresponds to mode zero and the other corresponds to mode one. So this uh, 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 Hamiltonian corresponds to the, the, the move, uh, moving the phonons from this mode zero to the mode one by applying a frequency difference between these two levels. Yeah? 
So this is a so-called beam splitter Hamiltonian, and we call that the red side bond pumping. The other uh, possibility is that the blue side pump, which corresponds to the pump frequency, is the sum of the, these two modes. So which means that uh, you can generate the, or you can annihilate uh, the simultaneously uh, for these uh, two modes. So uh, the, in case for generations, applying a pump from outside as uh, uh, some of the frequencies, you can generate the one phonon in the mode zero and the another, another phonon in the uh, mode one. So this is so-called the parametric amplifications and we call that the blue side of pumping. So I want to show you that some uh, two examples, uh, two experiments uh, we, we performed for each uh, red side of pumping and the blue side of pumping. One is that coherent op uh, operations, oscillations of the, this uh, couple of uh, uh, beam resonators. The other is that the uh, thermal mode squeezing. Okay, so the, this is the structures of the devices and uh, you have uh, some the overhang here. So the, it means that the geometrically coupled together, but the frequency of these two beams are different. So it, there is no direct coupling. Okay, so the frequency of the, this beam A is uh, uh, 293.96, and the other is 294.34. So this uh, uh, frequency difference is much larger than the, uh, the peak width of the resonance. So it means that the uh, mode one and the mode two are dominated by beam, beam A or beam two. So the, uh, in that sense, that there's, there's a very small coupling between these two modes. So, ah, okay, so but, uh, uh, what we want to do is that to make uh, 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 resonant frequency modulations, as I explained in the previous slide, that uh, we modulate the uh, resonant frequency of this beam A only, <coughs> yeah? But it's lead to, if we, the, this modulation frequency is the omega pump is equal to the frequency difference, you can induce the parametric coupling be the, between these two modes. So how we can do that? So that this is a Hamiltonian for the A mode, and this is a Hamiltonian for the B mode, and you have a geometrical coupling here, interacting Hamiltonian. But if you don't have a, this as a pump, so the, these two are independently moved because there is a larger frequency mismatch. But if you apply uh, this uh, parametric pumping for the uh, mode F uh, resonant frequency at the frequency difference, so you can make a coupling. So this can be done by the, uh, uh, making uh, uh, normal modes uh, transfer to the mo normal mode using uh, this uh, matrix el element. And finally, the, you can get uh, this Hamiltonian. So this is a mode variable, it's one and two. Uh, let me say again that the A and B correspond to the beam, yeah? And one and two correspond to the mode, yeah? This is a normal mode. So if you uh, decompose the, this Hamiltonian into the, this uh, normal mode, so you can introduce uh, these two uh, uh, interaction Hamiltonians. One is that the Q, uh, Q1 times a Q1 square or a Q2 square. So this corresponds to the intramod uh, model of parameter coupling. And the other one is that intermod coupling. It means that uh, you, you can couple the, uh, the uh, Q1 and the Q2 uh, through the, this one. So this is uh, exactly what the Hamiltonian, interaction of Hamiltonian we want to use. So let me summarize that uh, when you introduce that the uh, frequency modulations in the one beam, uh, because of uh, this uh, geometrical coupling, you can induce uh, this kind of the intermode coupling. So this is a uh, uh, main result. Okay, so the, this uh, coupling constant can be given by this one, so it's not so important. And uh, so then, the, I, as I explained, that uh, if you apply a parametric pump to beam A as a frequency difference, so you can make a coupling or the uh, a beam split Hamiltonians and you can couple the, this uh, mode uh, beam A and beam B uh, by using this frequency difference. And uh, uh, we uh, made uh, experiments. First, we excite that this, uh, <laughs> this is, sorry, the complicated, but uh, we excite the beam A by the sinusoidal uh, force, so this vibrate, and then the uh, switch on the, this parametric pump, so which make the interaction on. So you can switch on and off, uh, in the uh, interactions between these two, two uh, modes. Okay, so uh, this is the experiment. So first, we excite the, this beam A mode, drive at F1. So you can generate the, the phonons only in this mode one, yeah? Uh, and then the applying a parametric pump at the frequency difference. So you can uh, move the phonons from here to here. So this is a plot 
uh, when you change the driving frequency, driving frequency for at this one, and change the pump frequency. But this case, that is, there is no pump. But when you switch on the pump, you see that the mode two can be also uh, vibrating. Yeah. So this is what we expected when you uh, uh, switch the parametric pump at the frequency difference on. So you can transfer the phonon from mode one to the mode two. So you can see that the experiment is confirmed this transfer of the mode from beam A to beam, uh, beam A to beam B. Okay, so the if, but if you increase the, this uh, parametric uh, pump intensity, so you can realize that the so-called string coupling regime. So you see that such a kind of the avoided crossing as we expected as in the case of the same, uh, frequen same uh, frequency resonators. And uh, uh, the, uh, you can clearly confirm that you can realize this strong coupling regime by increasing this parametric pump amplitude. This is a, a comparison of the theory and the experiment. I don't go into the detail, but you cannot distinguish these two uh, plots. So perfect uh, agreement we show. And not only that this is a, a, a first order a coupling of the second order or third order will confirm. I'll go into, the, I'll go into detail later. But uh, I'm, uh, let me say that uh, we have a very perfect uh, agreement between theory and the experiments. OK, so the how we can use this coupling. So let me summarize the result. So we have a two modes. Yeah? So we excite the one mode first. And then the applying a parametric pump, you can convert the phonon from one mode to the other. But the important thing is that you can switch on and off these interactions by electrical um, means. So it means that the coupling between two oscillators can be controlled electrically. <coughs> yeah? So the coupling allows the transfer of oscillation more rapidly than the energy reaction rate. It means that is a, this is a very famous experiment, maybe. Yeah, if you uh, combine or couple the, these two resonators with the same frequency, you can transfer the vibration from one mode to the others. But this is, of course, that the, uh, in the case of uh, you have the same frequency of the resonators. But in, if you use uh, this parametric pump, even when you have a different frequency, yeah, you can convert the vibration from one mode to the others. And the important thing is that you can switch on and off this parametric pump. The width of your resonance overlaps with the other one. You can have no, 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 one no, no. gigahertz and one hertz, and you can make yeah. a parametric. Yeah, yeah, this is a parametric. I think this is also done by the op optomechanical system. Uh, yeah. Mm. And uh, uh, OK, so this is uh, some kind of classical lab oscillations. And you can switch on, that on and off this lab oscillation. So the point is that the, so you can do the, this kind of uh, experiments. First, you drive the, this beam A by the uh, frequency of the omega 1, yeah? you, you have a vibration of this beam A. And then the switch off the disk driving, and then apply a pump as the frequency difference. So you can convert the disk vibration to here and here, and uh, it's periodically oscillating between these two, even though that there is a frequency mismatch. So this is the experiment. So we first excite the uh, beam A and then the applying a parameter pump uh, to frequency difference and measure the vibration of the uh, mode B. Yeah? So uh, this is experimental simulation, perfect agreement uh, again. And uh, you see that the vi uh, oscillating uh, vibrations for this beam A, which means that the, uh, when you apply a pump, so starting from the phonon in the mode one and uh, applying a pump uh, to the frequency difference, you can have uh, some the oscillating in the phonon populations as we expected. But you, if you see the detail, you can also see the similar behavior here and here. So what's that? So this corresponds to the higher order contribution. It means that uh, if you apply a half of the frequency difference, you first excite the, this phonon to the virtual state, and then the, you can com uh, transfer the, this phonon to the, this uh, uh, second mode. So you can clearly see also this kind of the second order process and also the third order process, which is allowed for this kind of the parametric mm -hmm. So this is a more detailed uh, comparison with the experiment at the theory, and I don't go into detail, just but uh, this is the first uh, process, and this is second <laughs> order process. And also you can confirm the third order process, which is uh, something like uh, going up, up, and then the uh, transfer the mode two or something like that, or, or, or there, there is some such a kind of process. But if you take into account uh, these all the contributions, so you can get the, uh, the analytical formula for the, this coupling 
uh, coefficient, and you can see the very nice agreement between the coupling rate calculated from the this theory and the experiments. So the line width was actually more narrow for the higher order transitions. E Do you have a simple explanation for that? You mean that this one? Uh, uh, let me think about it. Mm, at least I think that, that you need to match uh, two uh, omega pump equal to the uh, frequency difference. So to, at least that yeah, the peak width should be uh, half. But I think uh, there might be some other additional reasons. Yeah, uh, I didn't think. But it's not probably related to the line width of the uh, resonance, something like uh, something additional uh, effect. Sorry, that I cannot answer to you. Mm -hmm. So you have a nonlinear process taking yes. place here. Yeah. So it's again the same kind as actually geometrical mm -hmm. linearity. Okay, okay. So this is a. Uh, uh, where is that? Okay, this one. So originally the, uh, the modulation was made only for the, this uh, mode A frequency, beam A frequency, yeah? But if you uh, make a, a prepare the normal mode by diagonalizing this Hamiltonian, so you can get two types of the uh, interactions. One is that is inter intra mode, yeah? So which corresponds to just uh, rising up in the, within the same beam. And this is the second, the intermodal coupling. So, but origin is always comes from this one, and plus uh, this geometrical coupling. So combining this geometric coupling and the parametric uh, the frequency modulations, you can realize this non two nonlinearities. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, okay, lab oscillations. Okay. So then the, this is a case of the uh, beam splitter interactions. So then the, we I want to show that the example for the this parametric amplification. I mean that uh, if you apply a pump frequency at some of the two modes, what happens? So uh, what we demonstrated is that the two modes follow uh, thermal uh, uh, noise squeezing. Yeah. So this is the case for the uh, photon squeezing state. So this is the squeezing operators, and you can generate the squeeze state by applying this uh, uh, the operators. And uh, the point is that if you decompose uh, these uh, uh, two variables into the cosine and the sine components, so you, you have uh, some of the correlations between the discrete correlations between the uh, photon A, uh, cosine component of the photon A, and the sine component of the photon B, and vice versa. So, and uh, this is a, a, a correlation a profile. And, uh, but uh, this uh, is a well known phenomena in the case of the uh, photon squeezing. And if you use a very, very weak uh, excitation, you have uh, some kind of the entangled states. So it, this is some uh, generation of the non-classical states, so the people have much interest on that. So what we want to do is that something similar ones with our uh, mechanical resonators, although that we are still the classical regime, but what happens when you apply uh, this uh, parametric pump to the two mode system? So maybe you can realize if you go into the uh, uh, quantum regime, you can generate a non-classical phonon state. So this is the idea. So, so the, so yeah, please. This is what you showed, it's not your experimental thing, right? Uh, I show you, this, uh, this, uh, this, is, this is not, this is just, uh, yes. yeah, yeah, so, yeah, 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 so uh -huh. I, I copied from some <laughs> the web page, yeah. Ah, uh, okay. So the, this is the squeeze of play, operators, and, uh, I show you that the interaction of Hamiltonian for the, our uh, blue side of pump is something similar than. So that if you uh, gen make uh, some of the uh, time evolutions using this uh, interaction of Hamiltonian, you can realize uh, something similar uh, states uh, starting from the vacuum states. Yeah? So the point is that if you apply a pump frequency as a sum of the two modes uh, frequencies, so you can simultaneously generate the uh, phonon in the mode A and the phonon in the mode B. So the, uh, because the, uh, the origin was this uh, uh, pump, so these two phonons are correlated to each other. So it is a, a, a concept of this uh, uh, parametric amplification. So, but uh, our system is not a quantum system. So we have uh, plenty of the uh, phonons. So, but uh, instead of the confirming that this uh, quantum noise squeezing, we can realize that the thermal noise squeezing 
So the, instead of generating these squeeze uh, states, uh, you, you can realize this is the uh, density operators applying uh, so summer noise squeeze states. Okay, so this is the experiment. So the, we are trying to do that for the uh, symmetric coupled mode and anti-symmetric coupled mode. The reason is that yeah, we want to measure that yeah, both uh, vibrations with the same beam because we have a single uh, the, uh, Doppler interferometer. So you can measure just the bound beam. So we want to make uh, uh, the, 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 the two modes uh, which have both have uh, uh, the amplitude for the one uh, specific uh, beam. So this is a, a vibration mode for the S mode, and this is a vibration uh, response over there, anti-symmetric mode. And uh, okay, so uh, then the we are applying uh, uh, pump by applying uh, 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 some of the frequency voltage to the one of the electrode. So this is a uh, 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 summer uh, noise uh, distributions for the. This is a. Uh, uh, cosine component of the uh, asymmetric uh, vibrations, and this is a sine component of the uh, symmetric uh, mode. So you can clearly see that this is a, a correlations between these two, a cross correlation between these uh, uh, quadrature components. So this is the noise correlations uh, calculated from that, and this is a, a experimental plot, and this line corresponds to the theoretical predictions. So you can clearly see that very nice uh, correlations between these two uh, quadratures for the summer uh, noise uh, distributions. And this is, uh, of course, this is uh, still the, 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 uh, the classical uh, uh, regime, but this is, a, we believe, the first step towards the generation of phonon entangled states. Okay, so this is uh, another example of this uh, 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 parametric pump. Okay, so then the, we are trying to uh, extend this idea for the much more number of the uh, resonators. So to construct the uh, one-dimensional phonolic crystal. So, and uh, to do that, we use uh, some different shape of the resonators. So this is a, a membrane mechanical resonator we call, but in principle it's the same as a, such a beam, double clamped beam resonators and uh, uh, consist from the aluminum gallium arsenide and gallium arsenide uh, by the system with a top electrode. So you can do the same uh, operations uh, with a beam resonators. And this is a fundamental mode for this uh, membrane resonators and you can clearly see that the uh, resonance using this electrical, uh, electromechanical transactions. Okay, so let me start from the, uh, before uh, combining the many resonators, starting from the five resonators. So they each have uh, this piezoelectric transductions, and uh, you can study that as yes, uh, coupling among these two, uh, five uh, mechanical resonators. So this is dimensions. And uh, this is experiment. So the uh, first, we actuate, okay, okay detection uh, was made by, uh, on the, this uh, uh, edge <laughs> resonators and the middle resonators. And actuation was made by also the, this uh, uh, end resonators and this middle resonators. But the first uh, 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 setup is that they're measuring the uh, resonance in actuating the uh, vibrations for this resonance and detecting the vibration by on this uh, resonators. And the second one is that they first excite the, this one and detect the traveling phonons to this end by using a Doppler interferometer. So we try uh, these two uh, setup. Okay, so this is a case when you actuate this five, uh, number five resonators and it detects uh, motion in this number one resonators. And this is a case when you actuate uh, this middle resonators and detect uh, on the same resonators. So if you compare the, these two uh, uh, plots, <coughs> you can clearly see that they are only in this case you can <coughs> see the very nice uh, resonance at 2.2 .2 or 2.3 megahertz. So which correspond to the, some kind of the confined states. So uh, this is an example of the finite telemetry calculations, and the when the frequency is higher than 3 megahertz, the, uh, the mode is ex extended over the, these five uh, resonators. But when you apply a 2.2 uh, this uh, frequencies, only the, this middle vibration you expect it. So the, it means that the, you have a two types of the, uh, uh, vibration mode. One is the extended, so which comes from the one end to the other, the other is that yeah, this confined in the some center resonators. So this is a, so we call the localized mode. So what we can do is that yeah, 
Uh, so, uh, okay, so this is the frequency response for this uh, the, uh, the traveling mode and this is the uh, localized mode. And what we try to do the same things as I explained, that is the red side pumping. I mean that the extended states and these localized states both can be, of course, the coupled by applying a pump to a frequency difference. Yeah? So you can do the same things as the case of the two, uh, two uh, resonators. So this is the case when you apply at the 6 MHz red side of a pump between this uh, uh, the extended mode and this is the localized mode. So you, have, you should have some coupling. So this is the response of this uh, uh, extended mode. So you can clearly see that the, the, the splitting of the beam uh, peaks. So which is, uh, of course, correspond to the, the, some coupling. But especially in this case, uh, this, this 2 MHz uh, local uh, mode has a very, very sharp resonance, high quality factor. And this uh, the extended mode has a lower one. So the combining the lower one and the high uh, quality factor uh, resonances, something, some phenomenal similar to the, so the EIT, electro magnetic induced transparency occurs. <coughs> so people call that uh, electromechanical induced transparency. So it uh, uh, shows uh, such a kind of the deep uh, the, uh, 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 valleys uh, in the, this uh, uh, broad peak. So this is a very nice evidence that uh, these two modes, the extended mode and this localized mode are coupled together. So how you can use that? So as uh, I told you before, that you can use, do that uh, for the switching. Uh, making a traveling phonon from this end to the other end, so you can have uh, some uh, uh, the uh, uh, propagation of the phonon from the right hand side to the left hand side. But when you switch on the, this uh, uh, 6 MHz red side band pump, so you have a coupling between these two modes. So the uh, exciting this uh, local mode, you can switch off uh, the, this traveling because of the, this is the so called electromagnet, uh, electromechanical induced transparency. And you can switch on and off uh, by applying this center pump. So this is some, something like uh, uh, phonon transistors. Yeah? Phonon is uh, propagating from right hand side to left hand side and switching on the, this resonators, you can switch on and off the phonon propagation. So the, uh, this is a very nice example, such a kind of three time <laughs> operations. Okay? So uh, then the, we try to extend this idea for the much more number of the phon uh, resonators. So it is the uh, phononic crystal. Yeah. So the people are studying the, this kind of phononic crystal, studying the, some sculptures. You can see the, some of the band gap for the uh, sound wave. And uh, also the, this sonic structures. And you can see that there are recently that are so filters. So you can see the, such a kind of band, band gap properties. So the, we are trying to uh, make a, such a kind of one-dimensional phononic crystal by uh, aligning uh, these uh, uh, many mechanical resonators. So this is structure, so the, the spacing is at the 10 micrometers and diameter is 30 micrometers and we combine it to the total is 100 mechanical resonators and try to study that the propagation from right hand side to the left hand side using the ex electric excitation and optical detection. Okay, so this is a, a band gap uh, properties for the uh, 100 resonators and 15 resonators, 20 resonators, 10 resonators by changing the number of the holes. And uh, when you increase the number of the, this uh, resonate, resonance or the holes, so you can clearly see that the, 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 uh, the spectrum becomes uh, continuous. And here you can clearly see, see the band gap. And uh, this is uh, consistent with our uh, finite element calculations. And uh, we can, by using uh, this uh, 100 uh, combined couple of resonators, you can form that, uh, something like uh, a phononic crystal. OK, so and uh, this is a. Uh, uh, time domain measurement. So for when you excite the uh, vibrations to this end and uh, detect the vibrations at uh, any point of the, this, uh, along the, this uh, waveguide. So this is a, a, a function of the, uh, the uh, uh, x axis is the time and the vertical axis is the positions. So you can clearly see that uh, this uh, wave packet propagating to the, this direction are coming back, reflected by this end are coming back. And back. So the uh, okay, so this is a, a, a time domain measurement as a specific point here. So the <coughs> exciting the, uh, the, this uh, wave packet at time t equals zero, and you see the vibration to this. So from that, you can uh, calculate the uh, group velocity of this uh, uh, phonon propagations. 
So group rest is 125 uh, meter per sec, and the provocation loss is 3 dB per millimeters at present. So, okay. So the, uh, we are, yeah. There's also another branch which has a lower slope. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. So it seems that this there's one which has a lower velocity. Yes, uh, I don't think this is, yeah. If you, uh, let me see. So this is a 5.5 megahertz, so it limits the frequency. Yeah. So the, uh, if you observe the different frequency, some, uh, at some uh, different frequency, you can see the sum of uh, uh, another mode. So feature has a different group velocity. But uh, I believe that this branch is not, does not correspond to that. Mm. But yeah, it's, yeah uh, it's a good point that uh, we also observe that such a kind of different uh, propagation velocities corresponding to the different branch of the uh, phononic band, band structure. Yeah. Uh, I don't have the data here, but uh, yeah, we observe that. Okay, so uh, this is a case when we try to switch on and switch off, as in the case of the five <coughs> uh, membrane resonators, and exciting the phonon to this end, and traveling to here to here, and coming back. So, but uh, when you apply a pump here, so you can switch on and off the propagations. So this is uh, uh, the dynamical uh, uh, swi uh, switching of the uh, <coughs> phonon propagations using this one-dimensional phononic uh, waveguide. Okay, so this is another uh, application that I'm going to detail, but using this duffing nonlinearities, you can also remote uh, excitation of the, this memory state, zero and one, and this is a purely the old mechanical uh, random access memory operations using this phono uh, waveguide. Okay, so now from uh, 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 to the all the results are purely classical. I use uh, some uh, quantum mechanical pictures, but uh, in principle they are all the classical phenomena. But now uh, we try to combine to it to the, the quantum uh, systems. So the, I want to show you our recent result of to this uh, quantum dot and mechanical resonator as hybrid devices. So this is the structures. Uh, here you have a 15 micrometer long uh, mechanical, electrode mechanical resonators, and here you have a quantum dot here. And uh, we place that at the point where you have a maximum strain. So strain effect is maximized. And uh, this is a, a quantum dot, and uh, you are exciting the, the vibrations by this uh, AC voltage, and uh, you can detect the, this vibration by this spectrum also. And also, we can detect that yeah, this vibration by using uh, this quantum dot transport I, I show you later. And uh, of course, you can apply voltage source and drain, and uh, you can see that uh, the quantum dot transport here. So this is basic uh, uh, characteristics. So the mechanical motion is this one. So the frequency is 1.66 megahertz, and the quality factor is 2.4 times 10 to the fifth. And uh, you can clearly see that it is a Coulomb diamond. So the, the we expect that the number of the uh, electron is less than 10, and uh, we use especially use uh, this uh, 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 Coulomb, uh, uh, Coulomb diamond. Uh, 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 single electron tra uh, transport regions shown by this uh, 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 the blue blue lines. Okay, so this is a low temperature. This is low temperature. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So the first, uh, what we try to do is that to detect the, this mechanical motions by using the uh, uh, the contact transport through this quantum dots. So the when you uh, make uh, vibrations of the, this mechanical resonators, you can modulate that the quantum levels and the feature can change the transport, yeah, conductance. So this is a result uh, for the thermal motion. So even at the uh, low temperature, say this case, uh, 80 mK, uh, 174 mK, such a dilution uh, fridge uh, temperatures, you can uh, still see that uh, thermal vibrations. So this is a spectrum obtained for this, using this uh, quantum dot transport. And uh, if you plot the, these areas as a function of the, uh, the temperatures uh, by taking into account that the, uh, the transconductance, uh, which also has a temperature dependence, so you can see the very nice uh, linear dependence of this area as a function of temperature. So this corresponds to the uh, uh, equipartition theorem. It means that yeah, this area corresponds to the temperature. So uh, what we are observing is really we are sure that yeah, it's uh, coming from the uh, thermal uh, fluctuation. Okay, so that we can get uh, some numbers and uh, the sensitivities and uh, uh, sensitivities at uh, 63 
femtometer power root hertz correspond to the 170 femtometer uh, standard deviations and uh, which correspond to 70 times uh, the standard quantum limit. So we, we are still the far from that yeah, quantum limit detection, but now uh, the, the sensitivity was limited by the uh, external ampli um, uh, amplifier, so we still have uh, room to uh, improve the this sensitivity. Okay, so then the, uh, this is a detection of the mechanical motion by using a quantum knot transport. Then the, we are studying the, the back action effect. <coughs> so it means that when you make uh, vibrations, you can change the, uh, the electron levels. Uh, and uh, this uh, uh, change, uh, this uh, modulations changes, uh, for example, the population of the electron or something like that. So it can make a back action to this mechanical resonator. So if you see that uh, this effect, it means that uh, it leads to the change in the resonance frequency and change in the quality factor. So this is a uh, typical back action effect you can observe. So this is a quantum dot transport, so differential conductance. And uh, starting from that, uh, when you have a no uh, source drain bias voltage, so that you have seen that some uh, a tendency, this tendency corresponds to the piezoelectric uh, frequency uh, modulations, which is the same as that the resonator I showed you at the beginning. And also the when you have a, a matching in the, uh, this uh, uh, the, uh, the zero dimensional states to the, this uh, uh, leads, so you see that some uh, electron uh, going out or going in, so it makes uh, a softening of the mechanical resonator, so this is a very static effect. But there is no the, uh, influence of the, the quality factors when you have a no uh, bias voltage. But point, uh, the difference are observed when you apply a finite uh, source during voltage, so you can see that the larger uh, modulation is the frequency and also the quality factor is drastically changing. And especially you see that some uh, the increase in the quality factor which corresponds to the amplification of the, this mechanical resonance by, apply, by using uh, this uh, single electron transport. So the, uh, this is a very nice result. You have a very nice efficient, uh, uh, still that the uh, change is not so large, but uh, you can see that uh, the clear that the back action effect induced by this uh, quantum dot zero dimensional systems. So this is a more detailed plot that as a function of the gate voltage and this source point, uh, during voltage. And you can see the very nice uh, symmetric, uh, asymmetric uh, uh, dependence of the gate voltage and the source during voltage. So you can see that uh, such a uh, uh, nice uh, the back action effect using this uh, hybrid devices. Okay, so let me conclude my talk. So the, we are, okay, towards to the nonlinear quantum phononics. So we found, performed the experiments on uh, the, the, the coupled piezo uh, electric resonators and uh, coherent time domain control using the red, red side button pumping and two mode samarone squeezing were uh, uh, demonstrated using the blue side button pumping and uh, uh, using these paired resonators. And the second is that the, we <coughs> increase the number of the resonators and the couple of resonators from the form of 1D phononic crystal waveguide and the propagation can be dynamically controlled using electrical signal. And finally, I showed you that the coupling with this mechanical resonator with the semiconductor quantum dots and which will open up the you know, novel application of the hybrid mechanical devices. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. <coughs> Thank you very much, Hiroshi, for this nice yeah. talk. So the table is open for discussion. Yeah. So this um, coupling to the quantum dot couldn't it also go the other way around? Um, if you have observed uh, phonon locate in quantum dots coupled to um, a resonator, and the resonator, do you also see this? I think that in this case, that the frequency is much, much lower, 1.6 megahertz. So I think there is, you, you have point is probably that the influence of the phonons, uh, 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 phonon quantum to the uh, transport of the quantum dots, right? Yeah, I think uh, it's, uh, we need to fa fabricate much higher frequency uh, mechanical resonators to observe that. At the present, that uh, 1.6 megahertz is much, much lower than the, uh, to see the effect. No? Mm. Uh, the, uh, uh, you, you certainly took into account the fact that this, this piezoelectric potential has a certain direction. So what's the relationship between the current direction and the direction of the piezoelectric field in the last experiment? You mean, ah, okay, I see. The quantum dots. Yes. Uh -huh. It's a very important point. So uh, it's not c clear for me. Uh, if you reverse that uh, source and voltage, it uh, looks like uh, the effect was reversed. 
Yeah. So this uh, might be related to the some uh, asymmetry, asymmetry of their uh, devices. I mean, uh, uh, maybe some uh, think difference or the, uh, the asymmetry in two barriers between the quantum dots and the leads, and which induce uh, this asymmetric behaviors. Uh, so your point is that the... Well, the point is that uh, if, you, if you bend the beam, Mm -hmm. We're going to have piezoelectric potential. Yes. I assume that is in, in this direction. Ah, okay. okay. And that was the direction of the current conduction. Mm, I don't think that the uh, uh, current direction and the piezoelectric. Uh, piezoelectricity was, I think, uh, related to the probably the voltage, not the current. So you have a couple between uh, the electron, you're transferring energy from the electron. Mm -hmm. So this is one one pictures for that, but uh, we are not sure because that the, the the energy scale for this quantum dots is much much larger than the earth. Maybe it's related to the previous question that the uh, phonon energies. So I think it's not so simple picture that the uh, I think uh, uh, electron transport uh, just uh, transfer the energy to the phonons and uh, induce uh, such amplification and the amplications. But uh, you. you uh, honestly speaking, we don't completely understand the phenomena. Yeah. 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 So it's interesting to see how, how strongly you can squeeze. So maybe you can go back to your slide mm -hmm. where you have the squeezing. Yeah. Very long. <coughs> yeah. Uh, squeezing. Uh, okay. This one. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So okay, if you increase at the pump amplitude, right? Yeah. So here, bef before this point, you have a squeezing, but after this point, <coughs> you have a, a self oscillations. Ah, I mean, okay, so yeah, you yeah. Go all the way to the mm. threshold. Yes, exactly, okay. exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you get quite close to one there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. This is not. Uh, and what is the red and what is the blue? This is a, a, a one correspond to this one, the other is, okay, red one is correspond to this one, blue one, this one. So, yeah. Well, so, okay, okay. okay. So, the, so, the, what? <laughs> okay, okay. so, this uh, red one is that, uh, yes, yes. Uh, y is that the uh, uh, sine component, and the X is a okay. cosine component, and the, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. So, but 90, uh, 96 or something like that. So I, I think some search for this some, somewhere here. So the point is how, clo how uh, closely we can go <coughs> into the search for the area without any the self oscillations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a question back there and then. Is that any check how close you are into the entanglement threshold here? Or I mean, you, you measure the, the squeezing of the two modes, so have you checked whether you are, whether this two mode thermal space is in hand? You mean? Uh, so by, by looking at the, uh -huh. the variance of the sum and the difference of the two projectors, do you see squeezing below the, the classical limit? Ah, no, 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 this is a classical. I mean, so if you... Yes, but you, so how, how, how small is the... Ah, okay, so probably you are... Ah, okay, I see. Ah, I didn't show that. So that, uh, I don't exactly remember the number, but probably uh, something 4.6 dB or something like that. The limit is a 6 dB in the this, uh, steady state experiments. Yeah. Mm. Which temperature is Room temperature. 300. 300 Kelvin. Yeah. When you have these arrays, can you quantify the disorder you have in the frequency? Aha, this is a very important point. But uh, at, the, at the beginning, we saw that uh, maybe the, this disorder plays a very essential role that we cannot get uh, such a nice result. But uh, uh, so uh, this, uh, okay, you can see the many peaks. So or maybe it's more clear to see that the number 10. So the spacing corresponds to some kind of disorders. But in this case, you have uh, some of the finite, uh, finite uh, dissipation, I mean that the peak width. So they have overlap. So in reality, there is not so strong influence of the disorder, we believe. Okay, so they escape the system before they really feel. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. 
So maybe uh, at very low temperatures, some localization of these kind of things might be observed. Yeah, it's also interesting subject, I think. Other questions? Um, so your your question is that the uh, comparison between the quantum dots and the uh, uh, point of contact. Yes. So okay, we can get uh, also the detection of the mechanical motions with a sim similar sensitivities using the con uh, point of contact. Uh, operations, but if you see the back action uh, effect, you you cannot see the any the back action effect in case of the quantum point of contact. So I think uh, it's uh, probably in that sense that related to some the quantum uh, confined quantum levels in the quantum. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning, you, you said you have a, yeah. a gate where you can basically change the strain and you can mm -hmm. change the frequency. Yes. How far can you push this? Can you, uh, like in silicon nitride, you know, people induce this strain to go to very high uh, quality factors? Can okay, you, okay, okay, just guys. the numbers you showed, like 10 minus 4. Okay, but that's, I think, a different story. That if when you apply a, a strain as a material properties, yeah. you can change the frequency. So, but this case, our case, we are just applying a, a piezoelectric strain. So it's much, much smaller. Much yeah, smaller. but uh, in case of the arsenide, we are also trying to do, use that nitrogen doped galimarsenide which can improve that yeah, the frequency maybe about uh, four times higher and the quality factor more than a hundred times higher quality factor we obtained. So you can do the something similar experiments people are doing for, with a silicon nitride uh, mechanical system. So, so if you mm -hmm. prospect a bit, if you want to go to the quantum regime, I mean, how, how, <laughs> how realistic is it? <laughs> I don't know. Is so, the yeah, yeah. Uh, the, I think the uh, point is that how, uh, yeah, I think there are many, many works and uh, I cannot catch up so easily, but uh, probably we need to uh, uh, realize that the high frequency resonators, but uh, one of the largest problems is that the, uh, our confinement of the phonon is caused by that acoustic mismatch. But if you go into the higher frequencies, I think there is a much less uh, the different acoustic mismatch between the surface acoustic wave mode and the confined mode. So that it's re uh, drastically reduced the quality factor, and uh, I think this is uh, now uh, we are trying to get the higher frequency, but the largest challenge, yeah. Mm. Okay, so last question. I was going to follow up on this question. Um, so mm -hmm. you said the button point contact doesn't do any back action interaction. So, but what is the nature of the interaction between the quantum dot and your mechanical resonator? Is it related to the fluctuation of the charge in the quantum dot? Yeah, I, I Okay, it's very simple. A simple picture is something like that. When you apply a strain to the quantum dots, you can change their uh, zero dimensional states, yeah? And the fish can change the populations of that uh, electrons in the this, that level, yeah? Average population will be modified. But I think that the, in case of the, the, uh, the quantum point contact, you cannot do that. It's just you can change the average, I, I mean, current flow. But, I'm some, but some parts we cannot explain. So probably we need to think about more other factors. But most easy picture is that, something like that. <coughs> changing the uh, electrical state, so changing the population of the electrons confined in the, the quantum dots, and the fish make a back action to the mechanical mode. I think that's a good subject for the coffee mm. break. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you.